I made those things in aspect ratios of integers, 4 to 1, 3 to 1, and so on. I also have at home 5 to 1. But I gr regret doing this because, you see, I really would like to know what happens when the aspect ratio is not an integer. Well, in some cases, it's easy to explain. For example, suppose that this were not uh, 4 to 1, but 3.9 to 1. What you're going to see then, when you launch 3.9 to 1, is that you see still four points. But you see, when the four points sort of comes, comes back, well, 3.9 to 1 means that the, this cross-sectional rolling circle is a little too big compared with this uh, horizontal circle. So it overshoots the finish. So it doesn't actually close up after a whole circuit, but it goes a little uh, advanced. So you see those four points, which would be precessing prograde, as we like to say. So they'll very, very slowly move forward. If you had, in contrast, 4.1 to 1, then you see still four points and processing retrograde. That's all you see. So it's going to be a perturbation on just the four stationary points. But really the interesting question is, what's going to happen if you had an aspect ratio of 3.5 to 1? Well, it doesn't know which way to go. I mean, prograde or retrograde, because it's trapped between 3 and 4 exactly. And, you know, what would you see? So I wanted to see this, but unfortunately, I didn't have those. But fortunately, recently I was in Lyon, working with a friend of mine, and he made for me, unfortunately it's a full thing, but um, 2.5 to 1. Let's revise. If you had 3 to 1 aspect ratio, length to the width, 3 to 1, you'd see 3 points just stationary there. And 2 to 1, it's actually quite difficult to see, but you'll get 2 stationary points. What would we get if we had 2.5 uh, to 1? Let's try this. It's easier to see with your eyes. There's a long, long transient, but when it settles in, towards the end you see, you see actually five uh, dots, or rather a pentagon whose vertices are traced. Imagine a pentagon, and instead of visiting the vertices consecutively, what you see is that you see those dots skipping and going every second vertex like this, like a in the beginning, it's a mess, there's a transient, that's because it's still sliding, but when it transits to rolling, you see a pentagon whose vertices are visited. I don't know if it's visible to the camera. I don't know. Yeah, at the end I can see it. Another thing that I thought of doing is, what if I don't paint only the ends, but I paint all the way across. Well, that's an interesting thing. I mean, there can be lots of different conjectures and guesses, but it's more funny to do it straight on. So this is three to one. And what you see when you paint all the way across is, I'll try to launch it longer. There is some sort of sphere in the middle which is sort of touched from inside by three curved lines that form a triangle. Number of long chains. How could you control the number of long chains? Well, I couldn't if you'd have played really smart from the beginning. <laughs> but you had a chance even fairly late. If you'd have cut one of these chains into two short chains, then you'd have been only one long chain and you'd have been okay. The second player strives to make an odd number of long chains, and on this board he can do it, and I'll explain how.